in the last video, we looked at chmod. We talked about the breakdown of what happens when we do an ls hyphen al h to sort of look at file permissions. And we looked at a file that had file permissions of 664. So let's get in and actually work with the chmod command a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and do an ls alh and we'll see that we have my file dot text here. Now we have a hidden folder here of dot local. I think it's interesting uh, or important to note that we have a D here in the first column. See that D over here? Uh, that's the indicator that this is a directory. Uh, so we know even if this weren't color coded that we're dealing with a folder here because it has a D at the beginning. So let's modify the permissions of myfile.txt. Uh, we have rw, which is 6. We have rw, which is 6. And we have an r, which is 4. It belongs to the user Joe who, and the group Joe. Let's not change user group ownership in this video. Let's just do file permissions. So I can do a chmod. We can do this in a couple of different ways. Uh, let's go ahead and give this a permission of 755. And uh, then it would take the name of the file. So if I do an lsalh, we can see that the first group was given read, write, execute because seven is four plus two plus one. We've given the second one five, which is four plus one. You can only make five one way given three bits there. And uh, that would be the group permission now has read and execute. And then everyone else in the world has a read and execute. So if I wanted to take away execute permissions from everyone else who has access to this file, I could do a chmod 754, for example. And we have a file now where the last group just has that permission of for read only. Now we can also use the letters here. So I can do a chmod and I can say u equals, which is user, and I can say give the user read, write, execute. Uh, I can put a comma. I can say the group, give the group read and uh, execute and give others just read permissions. And of course, I forgot to put the name of the file. If we do an ls alh, we'll see that we indeed have given out those permissions as well using RWX, RX, or whatever instead of numbers. So let's take a look at uh, how to do a folder. I'm going to do an MKDIR my folder. And if I do an LS hyphen ALH, we can see that we have my folder with these permissions here. It's a directory. If I were to just do chmod, for example, 644, uh, my folder looks like it worked out okay. But let's do an lsalh and take a look, and we can see that in this case, it actually did work out for my folder. But let's go into my folder, and um, I'm just going to give it a 777 so I can go in there. And let's go ahead and I'm just going to touch a couple of files. One.txt, touch2.txt, and touch. I could do this all in one command as well. So that I now have three files of one, two, and three. If we take a look, we can see that they all have read, write, read, write, read permissions. And now we know that we have my folder that has three files in it. So I'll do a chmod and let's do a 444 my folder. We can see that my folder did pick up those. I'm just going to go ahead and go back to root here so I can jump in there. So we can take a look inside of my folder and see what happened to those files. And you can see that although when I ran chmod444 my folder, the folder itself picked up 444, 
but the files inside of that folder still have the permissions that were originally assigned. So in this case, we want to pass it the hyphen capital R flag, which stands for recursive. And we've talked about recursive previously in my class. So we're going to have to work with a folder here in order to give it those permissions. If I were to do 777, for example, my folder, it will recursively give that folder permissions and every file inside of that folder those permissions as well. So at this point, after using hyphen capital R, you can see that all of the files have indeed picked up 777 permissions. Let's talk about the sticky bit. I'm going to create a directory here. I'm in a new user called home Sue, and I'm going to create a directory called just test dir. I'm going to CD into that test dir directory. So create a username Sue if you're in my class and do this with me. So I'm going to pico a file here. Now I am the root user, but I'm in home Sue right now. Okay. Um, so I'm going to pico a file called myfile.txt. One, two, three, save it, close it. All right. And this is a capture the flag technique can be utilized. So you can see that myfile.txt has read, write, read, read for only the root user. Well, let's modify that. I'm going to go chmod 600 myfile.txt so that only root can read and write to this file. That is it. And let's just do an example of that. I'm going to do an su su. And let's try to cat my file.txt. And we can see that permission is denied. I'm going to drop back to root. All right, let's apply the sticky bit. And here's what the sticky bit will do. And we'll do it like this. I'll do a chmod. No, let's do this first. Let's copy the cat program, which is a binary and executable. CP user bin cat right here that period means right here and you can see now that I have a copy of the cat executable program right here in this directory that I can execute instead of the one that is in the system path now the cat program right now is owned by root user and group which has read, write, and execute, but everyone else can execute this program. So let's go one more time. Let's do an su su and do a period slash cat, which will execute the copy of cat in this directory on my file.txt as su. Again, permission denied. Now the sticky bit we can apply with chmod plus s and let's apply that sticky bit to the cat file that's in this directory. And when we take a look at it, you can see the permissions have changed. We have rws and we know the execute bit has been set here because it's a lowercase s. If you see an uppercase s, that means the execute bit has not been set. But we have the sticky bit on the owner portion and we have the sticky bit this is the s set user id bit on the group portion as well so what that means is when another person executes this program they'll be executing it with the permissions as if they were the root user so when Sue runs this program now, because the sticky bit has been set on the owner of the file, Sue will execute this as if she is both the owner of the file root, and she will execute this as if she is in the root group. So I'm going to do an su sue period slash cat my file dot text. And you can see that even though my file dot text is for Sue should not be readable because we put the sticky bit in place on this version of cat we're able to read the file because when we ran it 
as Sue, we ran it with the permissions of root. This is an important concept. And so if we um, ls uh, a l h, let's do um, bin, I think it's bin password. There we go. And so the password command does the same thing right if you execute the password command um, it's going to execute that with the permissions of root here which will allow you to change your own password and so that's what the sticky bit is we can see it in this case we only see the sticky bit uh, this was created if I were to do it with our cat here it would be chmod cat uh, excuse me u plus s cat would have the same effect of just applying the sticky bit to that first group so that concept of the sticky bit, you will see that come up and capture the flags when you need to access a file, but you don't have permissions, but it's got, you know, getting that sticky bit uh, there so that as an unprivileged user, you're running it as a privileged user, uh, you'll see that come up in certain capture the flags. So thanks for watching, and uh, if you're in my class, we'll have a series of challenges and uh, practice that we'll do after this.